I just got back from a little vacation from Roatan, Honduras, and I didn't really work out in the two weeks that I was gone. Now, when most people go on vacation, they'll typically come back a little bit fatter and swollen up. But when I go on vacation, I usually lose a lot of weight. So by the time that I got back, I actually realized that I lost a lot of strength and muscle. Believe it or not, this is what I looked like shortly before I left for vacation. And a lot of people think, man, Eric's pretty strong, or damn, Eric's pretty jacked. But I actually don't think that I'm very strong or jacked. I think I'm pretty average or even below average, especially in the lifting and strength community. But it actually took me a very long time to get to where I am today. And some people might look at me and think, damn, Eric's got pretty good genetics. But I actually think that I have very terrible genetics for building strength and muscle. Well, when I got back from vacation, uh, some of my members saw me at the gym working out and they're like, man, what happened to Eric? Does he even lift anymore? So throw back to this picture over here is when I was in eighth grade. It's when I first started working out. As you can see, I'm a typical skinny Asian kid with shit genetics for building muscle. I ain't nothing special, but I knew that I wanted to lift weights so that I could get bigger and stronger so that I could do better in these sports that I played and to just overall be a beast and dominate in life. Growing up, I was always active and involved in sports and martial arts. And high school and onwards, I always incorporated some form of strength training into my routine. But I didn't really get serious about strength training until about two and a half years ago when I decided to compete in my first strongman competition. And if you don't know anything about strongman, strongman is a strength sport where you're tested in a series of events, typically involving some kind of deadlift, overhead press, carrying odd objects, or moving weird things to different places, and lifting stones. Uh, people that are bigger and stronger will typically have an advantage in a strongman competition since mass moves mass. Bigger people can move bigger things. Now, fortunately for me, I'm in the lightweight division for this competition. So unfortunately, the lightweight limit is 200 pounds and under, and I'm over here at about 170 pounds, only three months out from competition. I've always been able to lean out fairly easily, and I've had visible abs for most of my life, even though apparently abs on a skinny guy doesn't count but it's very difficult for me to put on strength and muscle. So for me to even add 10 pounds to any one of my lifts, like a deadlift or an overhead press, or gain like three pounds of muscle, it's gonna take several weeks of focused, dedicated training, and I'm gonna have to make sure I'm eating enough carbs and protein and getting my sleep at night for me to grow stronger. So all these things need to line up for me to make some gains. So I'm really not built genetically well to do well in the straw man thing, but I'm not gonna make some excuse and say, I'm 30 pounds underweight, it's hard for me to put on strength and size. I might as well go do a CrossFit competition or a Spartan race instead. I'm gonna do strongman because I wanna show that I'm strong. And that's not to knock Spartan or CrossFit. I think they both can be very difficult, especially if you're going for time and placing. I've done a Spartan Super with my coworkers in college and it was very tiring. But I wanted more of just a raw strength challenge for myself. So let me tell you a quick story about my first strongman comp and why you shouldn't blame your genetics. So my competition involved axle deadlift for reps, log press for reps, sandbag carry, farmer carry, and atlas stone to shoulder. And I'm over here thinking, I'm at about 170 pounds. Most of my competitors are gonna show up probably closer to the 200 pound mark. So if I wanna have a chance to do well against them, I'd better clean up my technique and get familiar with the implements we're gonna lift so that I have a chance to win against them. One important lesson I learned about success in performance is that confidence comes with preparation. So what did I do to prepare? I literally bought all the implements that I would be lifting in the competition so that I could train with it and be familiar with them come competition day. I bought a log to train with, I made an axle, I bought a 200 pound sandbag, I bought farmer carry bars, and I bought a series of atlas stones that I could lift over my shoulder. And I know that it sounds like a lot of work and like a very expensive thing to do, but at that point of deciding to do that strongman competition, I already had my goal to open this gym that I am recording in right now. So I just considered it an investment. So competition day comes and I remember going away in and the promoter is this big dude named Big Tommy Burns. And I remember him saying, oh man, you so big, being all like sarcastic and everything. So I'm like, ah, eh, whatever. Just you wait till I do the events because I know I'm halfway decent at them since I prepared for it. But Tommy's actually a really good guy and I think we're friends now and even kind of work together here and there. All the competitors in the lightweight division, my division, were visibly bigger than me except for maybe one of them. But as the competition day went on and we did the events, I can definitely tell that I was more familiar with the events and did better than a lot of them. At the end of the day, I actually only lost to first place by just one point. I could have won, but I made stupid mistakes. So I probably had to train a lot harder and more methodically than my competitors to do well against them. So the lesson here is that if you're disadvantaged, have setbacks or adversities that are out of your control, 
You just have to work extra hard so that you can level the playing field and get the outcome that you want. In some ways, I'm thankful for my shitty muscle and strength building genetics because struggling and prepping to lift the heavy weights of the competition really forced me to learn the optimal technique for each of the strongman lifts that I was practicing for. As opposed to, if I was already super strong, able to toss around competition weight effortlessly, then I would never be forced to learn the techniques so that I could teach other people and I would never have a real challenge to overcome. And I think building a strong mindset and a character is more important than building a strong body. Because if you build a strong mindset and character, you could use your mind to really achieve anything you want, including building a strong body. And guess what? One of the best ways to build a strong mindset is to build a strong body. They go hand in hand. So if you don't already work out and lift weights, you should definitely go work out and lift weights. Thank you for watching if you made it here through the end. If you do want to see some of my training or competition footage, I am on Instagram, Coach Eric Hung, and my gym is Strength Camp SF. Peace.